and then slowly open the eyes. My question is, what's the difference in between pity and compassion? Because I always relate it as if it was the same thing. It's exactly the opposite. Compassion knows the greatness of who it is. It's empowered. It sees the unconditional love. It sees God. It sees unlimited potential. And it pushes towards that. Pity jumps into the same hole. Oh, you poor thing. I'm going to suffer with you. So instead of one person being in the hole, there's two people in the hole. They jump in together. But when you're empowered, when you have compassion, you can jump in the hole to help someone come out of the hole. No matter how that looks. Sometimes it might be soft. Sometimes it might be hard. It's a wake-up call. And that's compassion. Pity is never like that. Pity sees the victim. Compassion sees the creator. Sees unlimited potential. Because it knows its own. There is one facet that talks about unity impregnated in all existence. And I want to know if that unity is talking about is consciousness or what is? It's consciousness. Everything's the same. Everything's unconditional love. That vibration is penetrating everything. It is the totality. Every part. It never came. It never left. It is eternally the whole. But because of the illusion, we see parts. But there's no part. There's only that. And nothing ever leaves because nothing ever comes. And when we go into unity, we realise we are everything. Scientifically, they can prove it. But experimentally, people don't understand it. Because it's beyond the intellect. It's experiential. All of the things that are beyond knowledge come from omniscience, come from the heart, come from the bigger brain, the God in everything. And we have to experience that. So, yes, it's permeating everything because it is everything. It's all the same. Within and without. Didn't make it much clearer, no? <laughs> the other day, I did a reflection to a companion. But then, afterwards, I received a reflection that I was taking in that that I said. Can you talk about that, please? Because it confused me. First, you have to trust in yourself. But when it's not coming with a clean energy, when you're projecting or you're doing it for approval or to look important, that's when it's taking. Because when you're giving a clear reflection, it comes from the heart and it comes with an energy that touches every heart. And if it doesn't do that... It's often a place of demonstrating. It was like the other day, I told one of the students, you're saying this from your ego. It's not coming from your heart. It's not coming from a place of clarity. It's not coming from your experience. You know, many people give advice. They don't give their experience or something they heard. And that's not to give. That's putting yourself in a posture of teacher. And really, you have to be giving from your heart. 
That's why when you take the commitment, you take a commitment to be an eternal student. So all we're really sharing is our own experience, not something we heard or something that someone else said, but we're sharing our experience. And it has a very clean energy. And it's another reason I tell you that when you give a reflection, always put the reflection through you first. Because we're always teaching or often reflecting that which we need to know. Okay, so it's just that. Obviously there was some energy that wasn't clean. Hmm? Next question. I'm always doubting of myself and I, I have a lot of insecurities and my question is, as I go on expanding my consciousness, my self-esteem will grow? Of course. But the thing is we doubt ourselves because we're not present in the moment. We're not anchored in consciousness and we have a fear of making a mistake. So everything we do comes from fear. But when you're loving yourself, when you're secure, you realise that you can't make a mistake. You just have another experience, a learning process. So when you trust in yourself and you move into action with clarity, everything else falls into line. But you have to let go of the objective. Like the goal, the goal, the goal, the goal. It's in each moment. Because often, as we're moving forward, the path will go in a different direction. When we let go of control, we discover something more. But when we're fixed on something, we're like a horse with blinkers. All they can do is see straight ahead. And you have to be open, focused, being excellent in the present moment, challenging your fears, but also being open to receive, to evolve, to change, to grow. You know, and this is all part of the process. So never fear to move into action. And... People always do this. They ask one person and then they ask another person and then they ask another person. And all that happens is your insecurity is reflected externally. Someone will say this, the next one will say that and you'll end up dizzy. You'll be the same. You'll be like, oh, now I've got no clarity. So you go in and you trust in you. And, you know, of course, if you, someone knows more than you, if it's something really important and they have more experience, you can talk to them. But this insecurity, this indecisiveness, this incapacity to make a decision of, you know, do I eat an ice cream or should I get chocolate? You know, some people do it with everything and they end up crazy, you know. They're never in the moment. And the minute they do it, they regret. And this is another thing. If you do something and you don't like the result, you change. Don't spend another half an hour in repenting. Oh, I did that. Didn't work. Now I change. Always that. Always that positivity. Everything's an opportunity for growth, for change, for more, but here now. My question is related with the growth. 
When we are expanding, it's very clear. We are anchored. But when we feel uncomfortable or stuck, how I can see the growth in those moments and how to take advantage of those moments to grow more. You know, the thing is this. It's very clear when you're contracted because you're full of questions. Why is this happening? What am I feeling? Am I still growing? No, I'm not growing. Blah, 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 blah. When you're expanded, there's no question. Why? Because you're in your heart. You're sitting there in consciousness. You're in silence. Everything's flowing. Everything's opening. You're feeling that innate joy that's within all of us. And everything's perfect. So the minute this starts, the duality, you know automatically that you're in your ego. You're hooked in a program. And all you can do in that moment is instead of questioning, 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 is just going deeper and connecting. And watch yourself. What happens? Firstly, you want to go for your addictions, no? Oh, I want to go and eat something. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. Oh, I can't lay still. I can't unify. And that's the moment where you have to go and express. You have to express what's going on. And then you have to go deeper. So every opportunity is to be more present and to let everything go because there's stress moving. And it's a good moment. Yeah, we all love to be expanded. But to live in permanent expansion, you have to empty all of this. And then at the end of the process, you have to start catching it. You have to start catching the puppeteer that's trying to pull the programs and go deeper into consciousness so you don't pick up the old dramas, the old behaviours, just to be here. Oh, yeah, I know that one. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. Here, 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 here. I choose for something different. This always has confusion when you're moving stress. When you're in consciousness, there's silence. You talk about playing in the illusion. And when we live out of here, we all jump in duality in the head. No, everybody is in duality and in the head. So how can I remain in that permanent consciousness in a responsible way? Just to be present. You know, that has to become your experience. You have to know yourself so intimately that you know your victim. And it's always, all oh, for all my life. You know instantly that's the victim. So do you hook into it? Or do you laugh at it? Do you give it power and suffer it? Or do you laugh and go deeper? And that's responsibility. And you can see the movement. Because it's always outward. It's never joyful. It's always confusion. And you just have to go in. And this is the beauty of the facets. You know, everyone says, oh, you have to be in a space of no mind. It is impossible. Impossible. Until you're completely awake to be in no mind. You will have moments. So you need a tool that's going to break those thoughts. 
So you see the thought, you see the feeling, love creates me in my perfection. Praise love for this moment in its perfection. In, 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 back into the consciousness. And it's just to be present, to be alert, to be conscious of self and to know yourself intimately. And then it's easy. You know, you must know your programs. There's always like five of them. You know, there's not so many. These are my programs. These are my dramas. These are my insecurities. And laugh at them. Just laugh at them. And come back here. And there are always things you can't change. And come back here. There's something wrong. And come back here. There's something wrong with me. And come back here. It's always the same. It's amazing we can't catch them. We're like dogs chasing our tails, no? And wondering when we catch it, it hurts. You have to catch it and just laugh at it. How do we forgive ourselves without just skipping the part where we feel the pain and then... And also, how do we... I don't know, how do we just do better? <laughs> I don't know, actually. You know, humanity commits atrocities every day. And they do it consciously to the planet, to the environment, to the animals, to humans. We traffic humans for prostitution. We do horrific things. Why do humans do horrific things? Because they live in lack. Why do they live in lack? Because they cannot see reality. They don't live in the present moment. They don't take responsibility for anything that's happening on the planet. They think it's someone else's responsibility. Because we're so ingrained in our suffering and our victim and our greed and our lack, we don't take responsibility for what we're being. But the fact is, when we're not present, we don't know what we do. And 99% of humanity is not present. And this is what we're trying to change. To become consciousness in action. To take responsibility for our world, our life, our decisions. To find a place of unity. Not politically or because of an isism. Because we feel it from our hearts that everything and everyone's important. And this is why we need to elevate consciousness. But it starts with each person. It doesn't happen externally. It happens with me. It happens with you, 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 you everyone. This is the truth. And I thought the COVID would start to shake that. People will start to realise maybe we shouldn't be taking everything for granted. Maybe we are more vulnerable than we thought. Maybe we do have to start taking care of ourselves, our immune systems, our health. And as a consequence, as we start loving ourselves, we start to give that to other people. I'm not feeling well. That's why I'm so with so much clothes. And I can see 
it's hard to be present and think the facet when the body doesn't feel well. And it happens also that I don't like to get sick, especially when we start the course. So I want to ask you how to be able to take advantage of all this to grow and to be more present, even more present. You know, it just is. So just anchoring consciousness. Like your head starts. You're probably sick because you're moving stress. And then the head starts. And I don't like this and I don't like that and it should be like this and it shouldn't be like that. And you just have to be still. You know, I've taught courses where I was so sick I thought I was going to die. And I'd pull myself so into the present moment that for four hours I could give with not a symptom. And then at the end, I'd just collapse. Why? Because I was here. I wasn't focused on that. I was here in this moment. You remember when I broke my leg? But really broke my leg. I was travelling all over the world teaching. And I was constantly going beyond the pain. Now, I'm not advocating that everyone needs to suffer. You know, I'm the first one to take a headache pill or a vitamin C or whatever. I have no problem. You know, I'll take a medication for anything. But you need to be present. You need to be present. And to let go of the judgments. I don't want to be like this. You are like this. In this moment, I'm like this. So go deeper. Use it to find a new level. To be present. 100% present. And move the stress. But don't fight against reality. Flow with it. And when you flow with reality, you are completely unlimited. Because you're so in the present moment, so in the present moment, you're there. And what's the difference between that stress and any other stress? Oh, I've got a cold. But you have judgments with it. I don't want to be. Well, you are. The way we negate what's in front of us. And I keep saying to you, if it's in front of you, it's yours. It's another opportunity to grow. You know, you're all living together. Everyone in front of you is yours. You have to adapt. You have to change. You have to let go of the judgment. And it's the same with your physical. You have to embrace it. You have to be loving. I don't want to be sick. Oh, well, I'm sick. Okay, I'm going to be loving. I'll finish the course. I go and rest. When I unify, I go deeper. You know, you just have to be present with that. But stop judging it like it's the end of the world. You've got a cold. You don't have terminal cancer, you know. Hi. Can you talk about the abandonment? And why do we continue with the circle of that? You know, I can talk about anything. And abandonment always comes from self. Because we think that all the love's external. So we compromise, we put on masks, we doubt ourselves, we seduce, 
we lie, we steal, we lose our pure essence. We lose our truth. We lose the greatness of who we are. Because we're trying to balance and control everything outside. Why? Because we're afraid. And why are we afraid? Because we don't know love. But as we come home to ourselves and we start to experience that love internally, we start to speak the truth. We start to take off our masks. We start to choose what we're being as being the most important thing. Our integrity, our clarity, our authenticity. And that becomes the most precious thing. And that's what we're giving to the world. But until we have this internally, we don't feel secure. And that's why everyone's so afraid of showing themselves. Because fundamentally, we think there's something wrong with us. Because from the time we were this big, we were told there was something wrong with us. And we changed so much with society, religion, everything. Everything, 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 everything. That we had no idea that all the time the love was there. So now we're coming back to that love. And then we're going to have authentic humans that love themselves. And those people give to the world. Fear always takes. There's never enough. It's full of greed and always taking. Even when it gives, it's taking. But love is so abundant... It gives from that abundance. Like nature, like God, like life. It's like that. So the abandonment always starts with self. As does love. If I love myself unconditionally, I can love everyone unconditionally. Listo. Come visit our webpage for books, movies, and our wonderful retreat centers. Isha's simple yet powerful system is transforming lives around the world.